Anytime we depart or arrive at an airfield, we need to obtain the current weather information, and this allows us to pick the correct runway, set the correct altimeter setting, calculate the performance of our aircraft, and know if we can legally fly VFR into the field. Now we could just ask ATC for this information, but it kind of clogs up the radio and makes their job even harder. And trust me, you want those guys to be focused on helping you avoid hitting other airplanes. So because of that, we have automated weather reporting frequencies we can listen to before we go talk to ATC or fly into that untowered airfield. The first one of these is ATIS, and that stands for Automated Terminal Information Service. You'll usually find this at bigger airfields like Class Bravo, Class Charlie, and some Class Delta airfields. As you can see on this VFR sectional, we could listen to that ATIS report by tuning in this frequency right here on one of our comm radios. Let's listen in and see what the weather is over at Wichita Airport. Wichita Airport is Charlie 00532, wind 1808, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature minus 7, dew point minus 12, altimeter 3034. Simultaneous visual approach, new sign runway 1 on the left, runway 1 on the right. Notice here that every ATIS message is designated with a letter and a time that it was produced. And this allows you to determine if you have the most up-to-date weather. New recordings are usually produced every hour, and these are usually prepared by a human being every 45 to 50 minutes after the hour. And they'll produce more of these if the weather's changing rapidly, that way you have the most up-to-date weather information. And that's pretty handy to know because if the current time is 0150 Zulu, then you know this information came out almost an hour ago and Delta should be coming out really soon. And when I contact air traffic control, I tell them I have information Charlie, and now they know exactly which weather information I have. And this is what that might sound like. Wichita approach, Skyhawk 1234 Papa, 25 nautical miles west of the field, 3,500, inbound with Charlie. And now, approach knows that I have information Charlie at the field. And if that's not the most current ATIS, they should tell you. Skyhawk 1234 Papa, Wichita Approach, radar contact 24 nautical miles west of the field. Information Delta now, current altimeter 3035. As you can see in his reply, he let us know that Delta is the most current ATIS at the field. And that's no problem. We'll just listen to the ATIS frequency on our backup radio and then we'll let him know once we have it. Now there's probably going to be some times when you come into the field and there's no ATIS available. If that happens, you can make a radio call like this. Wichita Approach, Skyhawk 1234 Papa, 25 nautical miles west of the field, 3,500 inbound with negative ATIS. Now if you make this radio call, be ready because he's about to give you a bunch of information. But the weather information that he gives you should be in the same format as the ATIS broadcast. And right now you're probably thinking, well I'll just get the weather myself by looking it up on ForeFlight. And while that's an excellent idea and ForeFlight's an awesome tool, the weather you see there doesn't always match perfectly with the ATIS observation. And because of that, anytime the ATIS is available, that's what you should use. But if it's not, and you have ForeFlight at your disposal, this is the radio call you could make instead. Wichita Approach, Skyhawk 1234 Papa, 25 nautical miles west, 3,500 inbound with the numbers. When you use this phrase, with the numbers, that tells him that you have the weather, but you don't specifically have the ATIS. You should never use this phrase to let ATC know that you have the ATIS only when you have the partial weather from like ForeFlight or some other source. And by telling him this, he doesn't have to give us the entire weather observation, just what he feels is important. That being said, I want to show you one thing that's available at some airports across the U.S. At this airfield, there's an extra tab in ForeFlight labeled d -ATIS. As you can see here, they're showing information Mike, and it's all the weather information that you need to come in for a landing. If that doesn't get you stoked about the future, I don't know what will. Let's go back and take a closer look at the ATIS broadcast. Now I don't want to insult your intelligence, but I just want to read through this real quick. As you can see, the winds are 180 at 8 knots. The visibility is 10 statute miles and the sky is clear. But sometimes you'll listen to the ATIS and there won't be a ceiling and visibility reading. And this sometimes happens when the ceilings are greater than 5,000 feet AGL and the visibility is greater than 5 statute miles. And sometimes you'll hear this weird phrase, CAV OK. And don't worry, that's not talking about Farmer John's baby cows. That's just letting you know that the ceiling and visibility is better than 5,005. Alright, back to the reading. 
As you can see, we got a temperature of negative 7, a dew point of negative 1, 2. Altimeter is 3034. And that altimeter setting might be the most important part of this broadcast. Make sure you reset your altimeter as soon as you hear that. And as you can see, runway 19 left and 19 right are both in use right now. One more thing to know about the ATIS broadcast is that it may also include NOTAMs. Now you should have checked these prior to flight, but it doesn't hurt to listen to them again on the ATIS broadcast just in case something new popped up. Before we talk about the last two automated weather services, let's talk about three things you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about ATIS. First, it's used at high activity airfields. Airfields that are a little less busy will typically use AWOS and ASOS, and some might not even have a weather reporting service. Also, you need to remember that the recordings are constantly broadcasted, and the information they provide you is considered non-control information, meaning they don't control you with the information that they produce. The other two places where we could receive weather reports are on AWOS and ASOS frequencies. AWOS stands for Automated Weather Observing System, and ASOS stands for Automated Surface Observing System. The main difference in these two services is that ASOS is operated by NOAA, but the way pilots use these are the same, so I'm going to group these two together. Let's take a look beneath the shelf of the Class Charlie here at Adams Field. This is North Little Rock Municipal Airport. And down here in the information section, we find the frequency that we tune in in order to listen to the AWOS. Notice this little code 3PT beside the word AWOS. This tells us what's available on this frequency. You can find this chart in the AIM in section 7. But as you can see here, this particular AWOS, I can get wind, visibility, temperature and dew point, altimeter, density altitude, cloud and ceiling, the precipitation type, and it can let me know if there's thunderstorms in the area. One thing that you really need to know about this system is that these are usually fully automated. Sensors collect all the data and then a computer reads it out to you. And these systems give you a reading every minute and that's a pretty good advantage over the ATIS system. But the advantage of the ATIS is that a human being looks over it before the broadcast goes out. With that in mind, AWOS and ASOS systems can sometimes be corrected by humans. But typically, we're relying on sensors and computers to give us good information. And let's not too quickly forget what happened in the movie Terminator. Let's tune the radio in to North Little Rock's AWOS. North Little Rock Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation. Two, three, five, eight, Zulu. Wind, one, five, zero. At six knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. Sky condition, clear, below one, two, thousand. Temperature, one, Celsius. Dew point, minus seven, Celsius. Altimeter, three. Zero, four, one inches of mercury. Remarks. Notice the pilots be aware of deer and coyote wildlife in the vicinity of the runway. Notice how this report is really similar to the ATIS. Because of that, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I do want to point out one thing. If the time in this recording is more than a minute old, I start to get a little bit concerned about how accurate this report is. That's why a lot of pilots call this the one minute weather. And if you're inbound for the field and you're talking with ATC, this is the verbiage you should use. Little Rock Approach, Skyhawk 1234 Papa, 12 nautical miles to the east, 4,500, inbound from North Little Rock with the one minute weather. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please smash that like button and don't be done studying. Try this video next. You're going to love it and it's going to make you a better pilot. We'll see ya.